family, this is Carolyn and welcome back to my RV life. I'm going to answer a question I get a lot today about being a full-time RVer and digital nomad and that is how the heck do I get internet in some of the really remote places that I go? I'm going to answer that question today in three parts. So if you're interested in more videos about how I live on the road as a digital nomad and a full-time RVer and you also want to come along on my journeys and my adventures with me, be sure to subscribe here. So today I'm going to talk about how I get internet on the road and I'm going to talk about that in three parts. Number one, I'm going to talk about the technology behind getting internet on the road. Number two, I'm going to talk about the best practices for finding internet in the remote boondocking free, um, free camping spots that I find. And a lot of you know that I don't stay in RV parks and campgrounds. I like to go pretty remote. I like to stay in BLM lands and national forests and I like to go um, off remote as remote as I can go and so sometimes finding internet is challenging and I'm going to share with you some of the tips and tricks I have learned along the way for finding a cell uh, finding internet service or cell signal I'm going to get to that in a minute and finally I'm going to share with you a couple of apps that I use to help me stay connected when I'm on the road so number one technology how do I get internet when I'm on the road? Right here. Our whole lives revolve around our cell phones, don't they? So uh, my cell phone is a Wi-Fi hotspot. And anybody who has a smartphone, I think, has that capability to turn on their phone and make it a Wi-Fi hotspot that anybody who is around with the password can connect to to get internet. So anybody with a smartphone, you've got internet if you have the plan. You have internet. That's how you access Facebook and email and all of those. So basically, I just tap into the internet signal that my phone gets. There are different ways that you can get internet through a cell signal. A cell phone is one. There are also other devices that you can use. A friend of mine uses a Verizon MiFi and it's just a little receiver basically that has its own line so you have to pay separately for its own line and then you are able to get a Wi-Fi hotspot through that receiver rather than through the cell phone. A friend of mine uses a, um, a I think it, a MiFi through Verizon. my experience in seeing my friend use his is that it's very comparable. He might get maybe one bar better of 4G or 3G when we're out in some remote areas, but uh, for the most part, I think it's been pretty comparable. So my cell phone is all I need to get internet. As long as I have a cell signal, I can get, it, I, I can get internet. In a minute, I'm going to talk about how to find good cell signals so that I can get good internet. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But first, I want to talk about data plans. A lot of you, when I did a video about this a little while ago, a lot of people said, why don't you get the Verizon Unlimited? Get the Verizon Unlimited. Get the Verizon Unlimited. I've heard it a million times. I just want to caution anybody who is thinking about being a digital nomad or who is a digital nomad who's living in an RV full time. Before you get into a data plan, read the fine print. So the Verizon unlimited plan is not so unlimited. <laughs> um, I think it's the first 10 gigs are 4G. And I think, what is it, $45 a month for the Verizon unlimited? So in the first 10 gigs are unlimited, 4G. After that, it tethers down to 3G, which means anything beyond 10 gigs a month you're only going to have 3G speed, which does not work for me. I need 4G for uploading videos. So my plan, and because Verizon came out with this um, unlimited plan and they really want to push everybody into the unlimited plan, they stopped offering high gigabyte plans. I think that when I signed up, I'm at the highest, I'm at 50 gigs. And my friend, I think, is at... 75 or 80 
And I had, when I signed up for 50, I had the option of going higher. They now don't give anybody the option. Whatever plan you're in, you're stuck in now. They will not let you go higher. So I pay, I think, $275 a month now. Since I'm a YouTube creator and my job is creating videos, it's a, it's a business expense for me. So it, it's just a cost of doing business. But 50 gigs for $275. I Last month, my phone bill, are you ready? Was $475. Because if I go over that 50 gigs, which I do sometimes if I run out of data, it is $15 a gig. Yeah, $15 a gig is what I pay if I go over 50. So um, I've thought about different ways, maybe getting a different carrier with a cheaper plan and having two phones. And I'm sure there are options that are less expensive, but I'm about convenience. I don't wanna be handling multiple cell phones, multiple carriers, having multiple bills. Uh, that is not what I want to do. There are also options out there which you can buy on eBay where you buy somebody's expired or somebody's unlimited plan. And on the last time I did a video on this, somebody reached out to me. So you pay like $1,000 or $1,500 for somebody's plan that was lifetime unlimited data and you pay $1,000 or whatever they're asking on eBay and you get their lifetime unlimited plan. Um, I don't trust that, honestly. Um, I'm not going to pay $1,000 for Verizon next month to say, yeah, you know what, we changed our minds, and, and then what's going to happen? You know, have you ever tried to fight a behemoth <laughs> like Amazon or Google or uh, YouTube? Yeah. Uh, guess who usually wins? And so I'm not comfortable with that. Like I said, right now my cell phone is, it's a business expense, it's a write-off for me, uh, and it's just a cost of doing business. So $275 a month is what I'm paying. The unlimited, again, I just wanna repeat, the unlimited plan is not unlimited. You get 10 gigs at 4G, and then it tethers down to 3G, and you cannot upload videos on 3G, or it, you know it'll take me a day and a half to upload a video, and that's just not gonna work for me. So. That's the technology behind getting internet um, on the road. As long as I have a cell signal, I can get it to internet. And the second thing is going as remote as I go, how do I get a cell signal? Because sometimes you're in the mountains, you're in the woods, you're in the forest, you can't always get a cell signal. So I'm gonna share with you the best practices and some of the tips and tricks I have learned to find camping spots with a cell signal. Number one, anything along an interstate is pretty much gonna have a cell signal. So if you can find national forest or BLM land within maybe 10, 20 miles, as long as you're not in a, in a, in a valley or in a gorge, as long as you're uh, you know, on a ridge line or, or high up on a mountain, most of the time you're gonna be able to find a cell signal. So those are the things that you're gonna need to look for. Anything that's on a ridge, anything that's high up on a mountain within, uh, within the distance of a cell tower. Where I'm at now, one of the things that drew me to this campground was it said it was on a ridge overlooking a river. And lo and behold, I have a 4G, I have one bar of 4G. It's not very strong, but I'm very remote. Um, I'm 15, 20 miles from the nearest town. I'm very remote, but I'm on a ridge line. I'm high up, so I have a cell signal. So that's one thing you wanna look at. Um, this is where Google Maps can really come in handy if you're scouting a place to camp. Take a look at Google Maps. Look at the topography. Is the place that you're thinking about going, is, is it on a river, which often means it's, it's in a valley, it's in a gorge, and you're not gonna have cell signals. Cell signals need to travel in air, and if you've got um, rocky, if you've got mountains, if you've got big rocks, if your landscaping is going to per, going to block that signal, you're not going to have a signal. Uh, in my experience, like being next to a river, you're never ever going to have a signal. So you really kind of need to be on mountaintops. If you can be near an interstate, that that's even better because there's almost always going to be a um, a cell signal there. If you can find something near the bigger towns, again, national forests, uh, national forests that are within maybe 20 miles of a big town, you're always gonna pretty much have a cell signal. Look at your carrier's website. 
Verizon, for example, has a part of their website where I can locate Verizon towers. And I have actually literally, one time last year in Oregon, um, I was literally camped uh, 100, 200 yards from a Verizon tower. Best internet, best camping, best woondocking I ever had. Look out my front door and there's my Verizon tower. And I'm, <laughs> you know, thank you, thank you. I got a lot, of, a lot of work done and a lot of very fast video uploading. And so if you look at your carrier's website, they usually have something that'll show you where their towers are. And so get out your Google Maps, get out your Google Maps, get out your maps, get out whatever planner you use to find places to camp and coordinate them all. And that's what I do sometimes. I'll take a look at the where the cell towers are i'll look at the topography i'll look at my free campsites.net because that is a source that i use a lot to find camp free camping and i'll have them all spread out and i'll i'll compare and see what might work for me for, for having a cell signal and while i'm bringing up free campsites.net so that's one of the um, one of the resources that i use quite a bit for finding free camping and campendium is another and the nice thing about those two resources is that users also leave reviews. So oftentimes you can look at those you can look at those websites and they'll tell you whether or not there is cell signal and will even oftentimes tell you by carrier. You might have two two bars if you're Verizon, one bar if you're AT&T, singular might have none, you know, whatever it is. Those websites are often, often not always helpful in telling you whether or not there is a cell signal. Some of the reviews might be three or four years old. And of course, there's more towers now than there were four years ago. So they may not be completely accurate. For me, one of the best tools I have found is just to go to Verizon, find out where the towers are, kind of map the tower to where I want to camp, look at the topography. Am I going to be up or am I going to be high? Am I going to be on a ridge? And especially if I'm just in a national forest and I get to drive around and camp anywhere, that helps me target where I want to explore and look for campsites. So let me recap the best practices for finding a cell signal if you're going to be boondocking as a digital nomad. Interstates are always really good. Finding camping within 20 miles of an interstate. Big, t big cities or towns, anything in a national forest or BLM land, maybe within 20 miles of a big town. Most big towns are going to have a cell tower. Uh, look at your carrier to see where their cell towers are located and try to plan your camp on a ridge or on a mountain. Um, not in a gorge, not in a valley, anything that can block a signal, you want to avoid any big rocks or anything like that. Rivers are often very difficult for finding a cell signal. I think those are about all of my best practices for finding a cell signal. And worst case scenario, what I'm able to do sometimes, I enjoy being off the grid and there are times I'll go three or four days without a cell signal. and what that and sometimes that means driving into town every three or four days to find a signal to get videos uploaded to catch up on some work and then it's not like I can't work when I don't have a cell signal so I'll stockpile my work and until I can get to a cell signal and then I'll go and I'll do everything that I need to do online for a few hours or a day and then I'll go back to my camp so that's another way to do it when I first started researching this lifestyle, I had looked at satellite options, but they were cost prohibitive. We're talking $5,000 for an internet, internet satellite option. You cannot get internet through the television cable satellite options. What is the big one? Dish Network? They don't offer internet. You actually have to get a, a special internet satellite dish. Positioning is really challenging. $5,000 was the minimum price I think I saw from everything I read and everything I heard. Uh, they're extremely difficult to position. They're very limited. They're very slow. I actually met a couple a few months ago who had one and they just said it's, it's just really, really slow. So for the $5,000 investment, it, to me, it's not worth it. What I thought is I would just, I'm going to be out here for a while. I'll wait a couple of years and hope that the technology gets better and less expensive. I mean, the way the world is going, you would think it wouldn't be that hard to be able to get internet anywhere. And um, so I'm hoping 
techies out there who are doing this. <laughs> I'm waiting. A lot of us are waiting. I would love to be able to go anywhere and have internet and um, hopefully that day will come sometime in the in the near future. And finally, I want to share a couple apps with you that I use to stay connected while I'm while I'm on the road. Number one is an app called Wi-Fi Finder and I think it was free. I can't remember, but it's actually an app that that will help you find free Wi-Fi within your area. So this is separate, completely separate from what you're going to get on your on your mobile hotspot, your Wi-Fi or your cell phone. This is actual Wi-Fi. Like if you park outside, uh, a lot of people do, and I've done it, park outside um, Home Depot, Walmart, grocery stores. If you go into Starbucks, you can use their Wi-Fi. Often it's too slow for me for uploading videos, so I don't do that very often. But this Wi-Fi Finder app will help you find places within your area. You know, you'll turn on your location, it knows where you are, and it'll tell you where you can find Wi-Fi in your area. I think most of it's free. There are a few filters, so you can say, well, I want free Wi-Fi, I want this, I want that. So, Wi-Fi Finder app is a really good one. So I didn't mention all the free places that you can get Wi-Fi because those are places for people who stay close to towns. You can go to the library, you can go to Starbucks, you can go to Burger King, you can go to, to park outside a grocery store. Um, you know, all, all the commercial places that you can find free Wi-Fi. I'm not really talking about those in this video because this video is really just about boondocking, which is what I do out in nature and how to get internet out there. I think everybody is pretty well versed these days that you can get Wi-Fi in a, you know, free Wi-Fi in many, many, many places if you're in town. And I don't even really do that. I mean, I've got 50 gigs of data. I pay for it. Um, you know, I don't really use free Wi-Fi. Maybe I should do it more often. But honestly, I spend as little time as possible in towns. I usually go in, get my shopping done, and leave. I don't usually want to sit around and be on the computer working. Sometimes I do, but not very often. I usually go into town, do what I need to do, and get back into the forest. That's what I like to do. Uh, so yeah, you can also get free Wi-Fi in towns uh, commercially through through restaurants and stores and things like that. Another tool, it's not an app, but it's an actual website, is antennasearch.com. Antennasearch.com is uh, the Verizon map cell tower map for me for some reason I remember not doesn't really work that well for me or it doesn't always work that well for me I think it doesn't pinpoint close enough the uh, a geographic area antennasearch.com works really well and that'll show you antennas and cell towers and I've used that quite often when I'm trying to map out where my next location is going to be so that's antennasearch.com and the final thing I want to talk about are cell phone signal boosters. Uh, I've had a, I, I had a cell phone signal booster when I first started. It was a Uniden something, I can't remember, and it was 3G only. Uh, that was $500 and it was a total waste of money. It didn't work. Uh, I tried out a cell phone booster. What was it? I think it was um, a Wii Boost or something. I tried for uh, my friend Bob and that worked really well like to get a Wi-Fi booster. That is something that to me uh, it seemed to work. It, it helped me upload my videos a little bit faster. It did stream video a little bit faster and uh, you know I don't really have a ton of experience with a booster uh, but a cell signal booster is definitely something that uh, I would love to try and test for you guys to show you the ins and outs of how it might work and really test it and take it remote and see how much I can yeah, boost I think my that signal. wraps it up. Um, so that that is how I get internet as a digital nomad and a full-time RVer. I talked about the technology. I use my cell phone as a mobile hotspot and there are also uh, other devices that you can use like a MiFi. I just use my cell phone which by the way is a Samsung Galaxy S7 and it works great. And then I talked about best practices for how to find the best cell phone signal, interstates, towns, avoiding um, valleys and gorges and rivers and staying on ridgelines and staying on top of mountains and making sure you're clear of anything that might block a signal. And finally, I talked about apps and really just the one app and that is um, 
Wi-Fi finder if you are going to be in towns and you want to find public Wi-Fi. And then there's also antennasearch.com, which is a resource that I use for finding cell towers and antennas. And uh, and the jury is still out on cell signal boosters. <laughs> I'd like to get one to test one out and see how exactly how well they perform. All right, I hope that was helpful. If it was, be sure to subscribe here. I have more how-to videos coming up. And of course, I always have the, the fun travel videos. I enjoy shooting those and bring you along with me on my adventures. Thanks for being with me today, and I hope you found this information helpful. Until next time, be happy, be free, and be kind. I'll see you down the road. Bye.